Hi everyone, welcome to an OxView tutorial. Today I'll be showing you how to build a hybrid DNA protein system. Shown here in our OxView window is our hybrid system consisting of a KDPG aldolase trimer up top and a DNA cage that it is uh, physically linked to. The linkers are represented as external forces acting between each DNA nucleotide and the protein residue that it is physically conjugated to an experiment. We first start with our input files. Um, you can see on the left, I have my file folder up. So the first file I'm selecting is the TMAT design, which I've named DNA cage. Um, and then the second one is our PDB file, which contains our trimer protein. And so what we're gonna do is we're gonna start with our TMAT design. You can see I've come over here to Taco OxDNA, which is a user-friendly web server that can be used to convert different file formats into OxDNA format and vice versa. We have many popular formats such as CadNano or Tiamat, which is what we'll be using today. First, I select the Tiamat to OxDNA option. Uh, you'll notice here there are four main options. The choose file is where you point it to your Tiamat design file. The Tiamat version is most likely going to be two, but if you have an older design, might try one if two isn't working for you. The default base is random, but you can choose if you wish to have a specific scaffold. And then the last option is to provide a force file for OxDNA relaxations. You're gonna to wanna to click yes to this, and then we will go ahead and click generate. And we see from our output that everything went well um, and wrote all the data. So now we need to click the download output link. When we do that, it downloads the zip file, which we will then go find in our downloads folder. Um, and it will contain all the data that we just got. So let's find it. And we're gonna move it back to protein DNA cage. And we're going to extract everything. It's a little bit off screen, sorry about that. Here I'm just renaming some of our files so that they all have the DNA cage. So we have our topology, our DAT file, and our forces file, and we're ready to go to the next step. So we're gonna open up our OxDNA window. With the files that we just generated, the DAT, top, and forces file, we can load and relax our system. So we're gonna take our topology and DAT file and click and drag. And this is what our Tiamat design looks like. It's just a triangle, it still needs to be relaxed as you can see. Um, but it doesn't really know where any of that's going, so that's where our forces file comes in. Um, so I'm going to take the forces file, drag and drop, and you can see the intended design. Um, you see the blue lines, those are the forces between nucleotide pairs. So when it's fully relaxed, it'll form the full structure. So now we need to relax this thing. So we're going to go to OxServe and press connect and connect to the default host. Um, and here we have our OxServe menu. We're gonna run our CPU relax job. And when that's relaxed enough, uh, I'm gonna start the GPU job so that it fully relaxes. I'm gonna skip ahead here and start the GPU job. And that's looking much better. We have our fully formed caged with our three arms. And this is what our final structure ends up looking like. I'm gonna go ahead and close OxServe before we go to the next step. Uh, and we're going to save our relaxed cage. So we're gonna save the simulation files by going to simulation files. <laughs> we're gonna call it relax cage and export. And we're gonna find those files in our downloads folder. And we can just copy them back to our home directory, the protein DNA cage. And I'm just quickly renaming my files here so that they match yours. And I'm gonna go ahead here, refresh the viewer and drop in the files we just downloaded. And we have our relaxed structure here. So now we're gonna add the protein. So we're just going to select the PDB file and drag and drop it into the viewer to load the PDB. And now we have our protein KDPG aldolase um, and our coarse grain view. So I'm just gonna select it and move it out of the way for now and rotate it a little bit. And you can do this using the transform and rotation tools uh, under the edit tab or as I'm doing with the T and R on the keyboard. And we go to the protein tab here to prepare our protein for simulation. 
So to do this, we need to make an anisotropic network model, which we do with these above options here. Uh, the assigned edges will fill the edges of our network, where our network's nodes are each residue for the proteins. And so here I created a network and I'm going to fill its edges by first putting in the cutoff value and then assigning it using the cutoff a and option. To visualize the network, just click the view network option. Now to parameterize the protein, we head over to the fluctuation solver. Here we can fit our protein network to our B factor data, which is automatically loaded. You can see it under available data sets and then our network is under fitting ready networks. For an accurate fitting, we must first change the temperature to that at which the B factors were collected at. So in our case, 190 Kelvin. We can view the fluctuation data by clicking on our data set. Fluctuation data can be shown in either B factors or root mean squared fluctuations. Uh, to actually fit our network to the B factors, we just click this network one. And when it's done, we will see a new data set appear. To fit the network, the program launches a web worker to solve the Hessian matrix and figure out the root mean squared fluctuations from there. So now that our solver is done, we see one EUA fit, 13 angstroms. Clicking that, we can view how our fluctuations match up to those of the actual B factors and they fit pretty well. So now our protein is fully parameterized. I'm just gonna show a couple of other features here. If we click our little save icon, we get this flux chart, which is a picture of our current chart. And if we click download data sets, we download our fluctuation data sets. So flux six would be with the one EUA B factors, while the flux seven would be the one EUA fit 13 angstroms. From our downloads, I'm loading flux chart six, and this is a picture of it. And you can see our chart on a nice transparent background. You can enlarge the chart and take a photo if you want more quality. We can also reload our downloaded data sets. Here I'm going to load Flux 7, which is our 1EUA fit 13 angstroms. So I click load, and there it is, Flux 7. And as you can see, it completely matches our 1EUA fit 13 angstroms data. Now let's close out of our fluctuation window by just clicking fluctuation solver again. And here's our structure still. So now we just need to make the linkers. So to do this, we first need to know which residue on the protein is actually ligated to the DNA. So the easiest way to do this is bring up our console, which I'm doing here. And I wrote this command specifically for this. So you can write out api.select PDB IDs, and it will select any residue in the viewer that has that number as its residue number in the PDB file. As you can see, we're left with three little pink spears. Um, those are our selected cysteine residues that the DNA is conjugated to. So now to actually make our linker forces, what we need to do is we need to switch to selecting monomers. And I'm just gonna remember that I need to select the little yellow balls here. And I'm just going to go around on each arm and I'm just going to iteratively select the DNA, then the protein, DNA, protein, DNA, protein. In the dynamics tab, we can click forces and create from selection now. And that generates all of our mutual traps, which will act as linkers. Uh, we can't customize the exact forces here to mimic the actual linkers. So what we have to do is download the forces by clicking the forces. And we are going to copy this file over to our home directory, protein DNA cage, and save it as linker forces. Now that we've saved our linker forces, we're gonna go ahead and delete them by first clicking the checkbox at the top and then delete selected. And now we need to load in our original force file for the DNA cage design. And we need to re-export those forces. Um, this is because of the change of the topology uh, once you add the protein in. So we're just gonna download the forces after importing them, put them back into the protein DNA cage and name these combined caged forces. Now that we've generated our forces, we can go ahead and save our system topology and configuration file. Uh, we can do this by clicking simulation files 
Um, it's also going to export a parameter file, which is where all the spring constants are held for the anisotropic network model of the protein. You see there we have combined top, par, and dat, and I'm moving them to the folder again and just renaming them. Now that we've saved our combined system files as well as forces files, let's go ahead and test them out. Refresh our window, drag and drop the system. Looks good. And we're gonna go ahead and add our forces. Uh, they're hard to see, but they also look good. <laughs> and there's our linker forces also adding. So now we're gonna test out the parameter file, we'll just drag and drop and it'll load that network in for us. We can go to the protein tab, view network, see it. And so it looks like everything's going well. Our linker forces still need help. So we're going to open up that file. I have the linker forces opened up here in my favorite text editor. And I can just edit the stiffness and equilibrium distance. Um, and these values I found by first simulating the linker fully atomistically and then fitting to a spring potential. And so those are the values that you see here in simulation units for the stiffness and equilibrium distance. And this is for an SPDP linker that's linking her DNA to the protein. I find it easiest to just use the find and replace tools. Um, and once we're done with that, we'll just close out. And we're gonna do one more final check on our system, make sure our forces are good and everything else is too. So load our system, parameter file. And we're just gonna check that real quick. Looks good. Now we're going to load our linker forces. As you see, it's very different. Um, and this will help relax it. So we'll pull those arms up to the protein during our relaxation procedure. And our forces are still holding the DNA cage together. So we are ready to do our final relax now before we simulate this. I've gone ahead and done the relaxation and simulation and just kind of wanted to show you guys the output. So this is after the first relaxation. You can see it's starting to get into the general shape that we want. And then this is it fully relaxed. We have our nice fully formed structure. And then the last thing I wanted to show was I did a simulation, just a quick one. And this is the trajectory. I'm just going to skim through it so you guys can kind of see how it goes. Turn it right side up first. And you can just scrub through the trajectory like so. And thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you guys found this tutorial helpful. And here's the credit page.